All right, I'm back. So let's go over some of these replies to Robert Breaker's comment on Denlinger's teacher. Hi, Robert, big fan. All I said was Godhead. Robert Breaker, you do greatly err. Enough said. Robert Breaker, amen, Robert. I guess that's two Robert Breaker, right? Nothing you is relevant. Now notice Brian isn't a dog. You just called yourself one. Talk about digging your own hole. Don't be upset after being called out. Repent, but no, no. You, you jump on Satan's bandwagon of goons and create strife. Typical Alexandrianites. Uh, you know, another interesting thing is if Brian Dillinger does delete this, then I have, you know, this backup here of what was said, which doesn't matter, who cares, right? But, you know, that's Proverbs 18.5. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into con contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are the snare of his soul. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So I guess that person is rebuking Breaker. You are the one of the biggest liars here on YouTube. You've been caught multiple times flat out lying and changing facts to suit your agendas. I dealt with some of your nonsense on my channel, yet I can't seem to get any real refutation, if at all from you or your followers. All you do is copy and plagiarize other people's work. You have head knowledge. The Lord doesn't show you a thing. You decided you are saved when you actually, the Lord grants you salvation. You knowingly deceive thousands while you giggle and laugh knowing you are conning them and no one even notices. The truly saved are saying more and more how much you lie through your teeth and we will continue to stand against you. Run along now and go make your videos without naming a name and lying like you always do. Their day is coming. This is from JT Does, somebody who has made themselves known as a hardcore follower of Brian Denlinger. Hello, Sir Robert Breaker. I wanted a Bible teacher like you, and God provided me. Thanks for getting me saved and preaching by preaching Paul's gospel of Christ Jesus in your videos. I appreciate all your videos. God bless you, sir. Please reply me back. False prophet breaker. My friend, this is rhetorical, but why would it come to this video to say this? I call Bologna. Now, Robert Breaker replied, To that comment. What on earth are you trying to say in your comment? Can you please fix your comment to be at least readable? You know you can edit it, right? Please edit it so I can even read what you are trying to say. Also, who said Brian's a dog? Not me. Also, I never called myself a dog. Where did you get that from? Please make sure you respond, at least coherently, without adding words to people. Also, uh, also who's an Alexandrianite? You mean Alexandrian? Not me. Anyway, I usually don't comment, but this time I thought I would. Now I'm sorry I did. Because I didn't realize people didn't know how to write in plain English, and that they would lie and try to add words to me, and say I was something I'm not. Question, are you a Brian follower? If so, then suddenly your comment makes sense. Very good point, Brother Breaker. I double dog dare you. Plain to me, I don't edit. I don't need to. I'll respond. I ain't fake. I thought you loved Brian. Yet you just showed your colors, Alexandria. I, so I guess when he said I double dog dare you to Brian, he's saying that's when he called Brian a dog, or when he called himself a dog or something. I don't know. I won't give holy thanks to dogs. Just wanted to show that you're all talk. I made a comment on scripture, a comment, but all you want to do is say rubbish, respond to that, because the word set didn't go through you, though you attack my English, lol. To, Ryan, or to Robert Breaker, you're a heretic, man. Husky teaches the biblical godhead, one god, three parts. Well, that's what Robert Breaker said at the beginning, too, is that one god and three parts. Uh, so... 
<laughs> they would both be wrong on that one. We are made in the image of God, which is body, soul, and spirit. That's not what the image of God is. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the body. The soul is the Father, and the spirit is the Holy Ghost. Uh, this is what Husky teaches. It's, it is that simple. One God, three distinct persons, is a contradiction. No, it's not. How is it a contradiction? It's not possible to have one God and three distinct persons. They contradict each other. How? It's one God made up of three parts. <laughs> so it's a contradiction without any explanation of how it's a contradiction. Body, soul, and spirit. The Trinity is not taught in the Bible anywhere. By the way, Husky believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Um, God the Son does not exist and appears nowhere in the scripture, you heretic. Okay. Um, yeah, there was uh, something interesting. I've been wanting to do some videos on the Trinity for a long time, but there was something in um, one of the books that I have on theology from Norman Geisler talking about how the Trinity isn't a contradiction. And he goes through and lists some things of, of what makes a contradiction. Uh, you know, for something to contradict something else, they have to, like, um, see, I, I can't even remember how it goes, but, like, they have to affirm the same thing, yet, like, deny the same thing or something, but the Trinity doesn't do that anyways. But anyways, I'll go over that in the future. Um, it's probably, I'll probably put that on the website, but, by the way, Husky believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Right. So here he's rebuking Breaker. Like I said, Breaker's not even really going after what Brian teaches. God the Son does not exist, appears nowhere in Scripture. You hear it, take Jesus Christ is the Son of God, not God the Son. By the way, the Roman Catholic Church is Mystery Babylon, and you believe the Roman Catholic Church's most important doctrine, which is the Trinity. The Trinity is a man made doctrine that is mixed in with philosophy. Is trying to be re and trying to be reasoned by human knowledge. Trinity makes no sense and is not biblical. Jesus Christ is God the Father. There is no God beside Him. You know, I just realized that I, I'm going to make this video in more parts. I think, obviously, and so the next part. Actually, hang on a second. I've got the book right next to me. So when I was talking about the the Trinity not contradicting and stuff, I'm gonna. Just, I'll just read from the section right now. Let me find it really quick. Hmm. Sorry, here we gotta find it. Okay. 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 It says, it is possible to have more than one person in one essence, okay, or one being, right? In order to complete what is understood by the Trinity, it remains only to show that there is no contradiction in having three persons in one essence. This is demonstrated by pointing out that the law of non-contradiction mandates that for two propositions to be contradictory. They must both affirm and deny something of one, the same thing, two, at the same time, and three, in the same sense. 
in the same or in the same relationship. Clearly, this is not the case in affirming. One, God is one and only one in relation to his essence, and God is more than one in relation to his persons. These are two different senses or relations, therefore the Trinity is not contradictory. Boom. There's that. So anyways, continuing here, you're going to have to stand before God one day and give an account on why you have been deceiving people using vain philosophy. You follow after the religious traditions of men. Husky follows the Bible. The Bible is our authority, KJV, not human tradition that's been passed down from the years by the Roman Catholic Church. Robert Baker responds, Oh, little JT does it. How are you? I'm a liar. Huh? Please list the lies. I'd love to see them. You don't get any refutation on your channel because, number one, hardly anyone watches you. Ooh, wow. Number two, I've told those who do watch me to never respond to people in an undignified and malicious manner, which is what you do. I don't think that accomplishes anything. Well, I just opened this up. There's just long comments. <laughs> this is why I wanted to go over this, just to see what was actually said here. Now, you see how just Robert Breger just takes stabs at people, and he says, oh, you know, he condemns people for taking stabs against him or whatever, and then he, he does it back. He's a hypocrite, just like Brian Denlinger is. You know, we're all hypocritical, I guess, to some degree. You know, uh, we're not perfect, but, I mean, there's like some pretty blatant hypocrisy going on here. Anything... Not to mention, accomplishes anything. Not to mention, it's not how Paul said we as Christians should act. Looks like to me, all you care about is wanting to debate others. I'm not going to oblige you. The Bible says, leave off contention before it be meddled with. I don't want to waste my time with people who only wish to attack rather than edify. Nor do I wish my followers to do the same. You've already denied the importance of the blood of Jesus on your video, on your own channel. And by doing so, you've done a great job of exposing yourself. Your pastor, Brian, agreed with you. Thus exposing he doesn't believe the blood of Jesus and the importance of faith in it. So why should I spend any more time trying to show people what you all are? when you've already done that yourself. So thanks for your comments. I'm saved and I know it. I'll be in heaven and I hope to see you there. How will I get there? Only through the blood of Jesus Christ. I hope you're trusting in it too. One question though, do you not see that salvation is by faith? That is by believing? Looks like to me that both you and Brian think that I teach that believing is only a matter of the mind. That's bunk. The Bible is very clear that salvation is by believing from the heart. There are many verses that prove that. I hope you both see and understand this. We are saved from the heart, and I've always taught this, because that's what the Bible teaches. And, you know, I'm just thinking as I'm reading this about all this, you know, saved by the blood stuff. I think it comes from an idea of, um, there's, you know, teaching, another teaching that, uh, I think is false. Uh, maybe I don't want to say too much, but it's about you know people say that when Jesus died on the cross, he went to heaven and he put his blood on the mercy seat in heaven or something, and that's what saves us. Something like that, uh, <laughs> which uh, is not right, and so. <laughs> I think that's kind of where the emphasis on the blood of Jesus comes from, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I would actually probably agree more with MacArthur when people uh, used to rebuke him for what he said, that it's not really about the blood, it's about the death of Jesus. And, um, you know, when people say that the blood was important, the blood had to be shed, you know, and just like MacArthur has said, well, Jesus just could have cut himself and bled out or, or bled, you know. Uh, but no, you know, he had to he had to die. He had to uh, give his life as a sacrifice. So, you know, that's what it's about. There's nothing wrong with 
preaching or talking about the blood of Jesus, but I'm just saying that I think that a lot of the emphasis that people put on it is falsely, um, you know, it comes from a false idea, basically. So, anyways. One question, though, do you not see that salvation is by faith, that is, by believing? Looks like to me that both you and Brian think that I teach that believing is only by... Oh, okay. Um, he does teach that people have been saved by works in the past, though, so... For him to say that salvation is by faith, and then he clarifies it and says, well, now it's by faith, but before it wasn't. And no, it just kind of ruins the whole idea of what salvation is. Oh, this is long. Now I also perceive that you and Brian also think I'm against calling. Not. I am in favor of preaching, calling the right way. Which is what the Bible says. You guys appear to me. So he's like trying to uh, rebut JT does in, in some side issues. He's going off on some other things. He's trying to defend himself. Uh, you guys appear to me to preach that only vocal calling is what saves. That is what. That is, you are only saved by what you say with your mouth. This is ridiculous. What if a lost man hits his finger with a hammer and screams, Oh, Jesus, is he now saved? Didn't he call upon the name of the Lord just then? So didn't that save him? Certainly not. Just speaking Jesus' name aloud. Calling upon his name by the mouth only is not salvation. The context of Romans 10 clearly says that the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Then it says, say it not, say not in your heart. The context of Romans 10 is believing from the heart, and the calling upon the Lord is by calling from the heart. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. It can come out of the mouth too, but if it only comes out of the mouth and there is no faith from the heart, then there is no salvation. Ugh, sadly, many today are lost because so-called preachers don't explain the simple fact. They say only Romans 10.13 and then proclaim a person is saved because they said something or repeated something with lips. But where is the faith from the heart and the gospel? Ugh. The Bible teaches that you must hear, you must first hear the gospel before you can get saved. Jesus said the following. Matthew thirteen fifteen. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. So a man is not saved until he first hears first the gospel, Romans ten seventeen, and then when he understands it and believes it in Ephesians chapter two verse eight and nine, then he is saved or converted, Ephesians chapter one verse thirteen. Yet many today preach that you don't have to hear the gospel or understand it, you can just ask God to save you, and if you do, then you'll get saved. But what did Jesus say, JT? He said this in Matthew fifteen eight. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. If all you've done is said something with your mouth, but you haven't trusted in the gospel from your heart, then you are still lost. I don't know your condition, JT, but I do know the scriptures, and I do know I'm saved. I got saved on July 29th, 1992, when for the first time I heard and understood the gospel. And it was explained to me and believed it from the heart. Now you still want to say that I'm not saved? Help yourself. But I'm not worried about my salvation. I'm worried about your salvation. Why aren't you preaching the gospel? The gospel of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 through 4 is about how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again, etc. How did he do it? In a bloody manner. He shed his blood for us. Do you trust the blood? If not, what are you trusting in? Your prayer? Your speaking? Your only calling vocally? What you did? Better watch out, buddy. 
We aren't saved by what we do. We are saved when we trust in what Jesus did for us. How about it? Are you saved? Uh, also, plagiarizing others, really? I don't do that. The messages I preach, I take a lot of time studying for. And I do my best not to steal other people's messages. He only said that because Brian said it. He claims I'm stealing reference charts. Really? So a man draws a Bible chart on a whiteboard and teaches it? Teaches it, and that's stealing. Are you serious? I simply drew out the Bible in a dispensational manner. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Why not stop nitpicking and putting down other Christians and start obeying the Word of God? There's so many verses in the Bible about how we are supposed to treat other Christians. Have you read them? They don't say to put others down and falsely accuse them, rather to edify. Here's just one. Romans chapter 14, verse 19, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. Do you believe the King James Bible? If so, when can we have peace? And when can we begin a dialogue in which we can edify one another? <laughs> well, we can't have a dialogue on Robert Breaker's channel because he doesn't allow comments. The problem is pride. Think you know more, and you want to show off to others how much you think you know. So you go make your videos putting down others who you think are wrong. Good luck with that. That's not ministering. And you won't get many followers doing that. <laughs> oh, man. I think that Robert Breaker is very prideful, even though he claims to be humble. It's, uh... You can tell that he's pretty egotistical and and hypocritical, like I've said many times. People are hungry for the word of God. Why not preach the gospel to get souls saved and then teach verse by verse from the King James Bible and actually give people something edifying as you focus on God and his word? Anything else you do is a complete waste of time. Have a nice day. Philippians 127, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Oh, I need to take a breather after that long comment. Okay, so I'm just glad that I went over that thing about how the Trinity is not a contradiction. I'm probably going to maybe title this video that. I'm going to stop here. I still want to go over more, but I need to take a break for a second. We're already at 20 minutes. God bless.